ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stick of Dynamite podcast. I'm one of your hosts. What? I'm your only host, actually, in fact. There's no guests, no other hosts, just me, Tyler. Uh, I don't know why I said one of. I think I'm just used to hearing that and saying that with Kill Connor Club. I've got simply too many podcasts. But this is my one. This is my own where I talk about whatever I want. I'm going to talk about me, video games I'm playing, movies I'm watching, uh, UFC, channel stuff, also my weekly ramble topic. So if you're here just for one thing in particular, you've seen the title, just head over to the description box down below or the comments where the pinned comment will most likely be timestamps that I've put down for you lovely people of when I talk about certain things. So if you just want to listen to a part of it or a couple parts of it, Go to the timestamps and you can hear me talk about those things. I want to help you guys out because I want you guys to be listening. And I understand some of you don't have the full hour or two that this podcast goes for to listen to everything. All the ones sitting, but you're like, I want to hear what Tyler thinks about this. I want to hear Tyler break down some UFC fights. Maybe I'll become a fan. Maybe I already am a fan. I want to hear Tyler's weekly ramble that I'm missing out on from now on. But no, it's here on the Stick of Time, my podcast. That's one of the uh, week's topics is what I call the weekly ramble. And I realize I just love talking. I, re- I mean, I already knew I love talking, but doing the weekly ramble is like a mini podcast. And I'm like, fuck it. Let's just do Stick of Dynamite again. Put the weekly ramble in that. Sure, we miss out on some multiplayer gameplay, but I'll find it another way to, to make that a thing as well. Uh, so you, you won't see the last of that in particular. What else? We've got some cool things. Uh, I've got, I'm at uni recording this because I'm doing this. Uh, through the live stream software OBS, recording straight straight here. That way I can set it up like a studio so when I pull uh, the UFC stuff up or I'm searching anything, I want to react to any videos or do anything, I can do it straight from this uh, program and then do just some sound editing. So the But I'm doing it at uni today because uh, I was trying to live stream this yesterday. But I got a three-hour gap at uni. I thought I'll come down here record the podcast. But I'm using their microphone. I didn't bring my mic all the way into uni because it's just a pain in the ass. Um... So there's a bit of a like a buzzing in the background. I'm sorry that I've if you didn't notice that, now you'll forever notice it. And that'll annoy you from now on. You're just like, Tyler, why'd you tell me? If you didn't tell me, I wouldn't have noticed. I, I apologize for that. Um, but felt like just a warning that shouldn't be a thing, again, unless I recorded at uni, which it's possible I'll do again at some points. But it'll be pre-recorded, these podcasts. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have done them properly. Uh, and I would like to get some questions and like a segment just to be... Um, community questions from you guys i'll probably do that through twitter so just follow me on twitter at tyler dynamite no underscore the underscore tyler dynamite is a parody account um so that's not me the one that says 100 percent the real tyler that's not me um <laughs> that's a parody um so you don't want to do that you just don't want to do that so this would be like the ramble there's no editing there's no cutting things out this is just me talking shit doing things uh Straight straight to you guys for an hour or two. I don't know how long they're going to go for. But I'm going to go for a little while to see what happens. Hopefully this doesn't screw up on me. Hopefully this doesn't cut out. Hopefully we're all good here. Uh, I know this sounds a little low through this mic in particular. But I'll edit the sound in post so you guys won't even notice. It should sound fine. Hopefully the buzzing isn't a bother really at all. Uh, and I can just kind of talk over it. Uh, we'll see how we go. That shouldn't be an ongoing issue. That should just be this one time only. Uh, but, you know, some things you just got to live with. Unfortunately, but, you know, the Sick of Time of My Podcast is back. New little logo. I really like this. With the purple background that's the same as the same style as Kill Connor Club, but that's like a white and makes it look like an anime style background. Whereas this is like, you know, I love purple. You know, it's my favorite color. Uh, it's, it's a similar style, but this is my show, my own show, where I talk about things I can't talk about on Kill Connor Club. And some things on here I will bring up on Kill Connor Club. Like my weekly ramble topic today, I will bring up on Kill Connor Club because it's an important topic. But I'll give you my un uninterrupted thoughts here, and on Kill Connor Club, I'll ask James about it. We can get his thoughts on things I talk about, uh, and as well, like I said, I want to be able to talk about things, other things I love, like UFC. No, I can't talk about that anywhere. So for those few people that are like, I really want to hear Tyler talk about UFC, well, there'll be a segment in this podcast where I break down upcoming UFC fights, talk about fight news, things like that. Uh, just for those people that love UFC as much as I do, because you all know it's like the huge MMA and the UFC, such a huge part of my life, but it's something I don't talk about on, you know, podcasts or my YouTube channel, which is such also such a big part of my life, so it's weird that I can't do any connections. But lots of people have been asking me, Tyler, I'd love to hear your thoughts on... 
this pay-per-view or this fight card. And I'm like, okay, well, I've got 30 seconds to do it on Kill Connor Club. How about I won't do it on Kill Connor Club and you can listen to a few minutes here of me going through fight cards, breaking it down, talking about that. That's right. Uh, what else has been going on? We've got... Uh, this week we just released, so I'm going to release this Friday, I'm recording this on Thursday, um, so I don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if Friday will be a regular upload for this, but um, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens, I guess, uh, but Thursday this week other things are being uploaded, uh, the Team Tashtag Team Dynamite victory celebration video, uh, I haven't seen your response, it's not up yet but it's going to come up. It was up on Patreon, and people seem to like it. People I've shown seem to like it. came out on Tuesday on Patreon. And if you want to get extra bonus content, just head to patreon.com slash, as always, $1. Become an As Always member. Me and James give you awesome uh, bonus podcast, The Kill Connor Clubhouse, my third podcast. Uh, that's he and I and Patreon guests, and you could be one of the people on there. Talking about cool topics, funny shit. They're hilarious and they're shorter, more concise Kill Connor Club type podcasts. Uh, getting, and it's all powered by you guys. Plus, there's a bunch of rewards, giveaways, things like that. It's definitely worth doing. Supporting us. The money goes to, you know, YouTube and content we do. It's, you know, I haven't pocketed anything from this as of yet. <coughs> One day. That's the hope, right? Now, it pays for things like hosting the podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, and paying for the t-shirt giveaways to send you guys some sweet swag, uh, just for the lols, you sweet vintage lads, as James would say. The multiplayer battle, speaking of the celebration, obviously the multiplayer battle came out round three. If you haven't watched it, go watch it, because I'm about to spoil it. I won, obviously. I just talked about the the Team Dynamite victory celebration. So, uh, three games to nothing, I defeated James. So, I don't know what else we expected there. I mean, I said I would do it, and I did. I told you guys beforehand, and like, just all disclaimer behind the scenes talk about it, right? Because obviously people hate me for it, like James's fans uh, fucking despise me because they think I'm serious. You know, the Tynamite, as I call him now, he's a character. My name's Tyler. Uh, I'm just a dude, and James is one of my closest friends in the world and my business partner. And co-worker, co-host, everything. Um, uh, obviously, it was all, you know, a planned thing. Obviously, the games we just played, and that's how it went. But our characters and the things we said are just, you know, planned out. And even at the end of round three, you see, you know, we broke character after the kind of credits of Nick talking rolled and everything. And it was a good laugh. Uh, so that was funny. But, yeah, for behind-the-scenes stuff, I thought I could talk about that. Because, <laughs> oh, God... Uh, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I know how Dunch James had played, like, he'd played a little, you know, I think his actual proper account was level in Revelations, maybe like 20-something, I don't know about Brotherhood, um, and 3 maybe similar, like, you know, he played like 3-4 hours, you know, he'd, pl- he'd sat down and played, I don't know, 20 games of it here and there, I don't know specifically how many, but, and he jumped on. He he knew what the multiplayer was and what it was like and things like that. But it'd been so long since he played it. But I was a person that I, you know I was obsessed with it. I was a you know a big uh, Assassin's Creed multiplayer player back in the day when it was a big thing. I still play it today. I was obsessed with it. I was a hardcore member of that community. I was good. I was very good. Like I wasn't the you know the best ever. But you know I had some high scores. I remember early in the Assassin's Creed three days. I had the top one hundred scores in half of the game modes uh, for a little while until more people start playing the longer people start playing obviously the records kind of go down unless I keep up with it but I played for about six months I played the whole revelation cycle I played multiplayer you know on and off and Assassin's Creed 3 I played for a good three or four months after Prestige once or twice or something Um, and then kind of just held off I got a bit bored with that because I'd played revelation so much and then 3 felt so similar Uh, and 4 because I got, I didn't play multiplayer until it was on the one, and not many people had an Xbox One because it launched with it. So I almost never found games when it was a thing. I'm finding it more fun to play these days now that I've got back into Black Flag's multiplayer because more people are actually playing now because more people have Xbox Ones and Black Flag. Whereas at launch, people had Black Flag on like the old consoles. They weren't going to rebuy them on the new consoles they just bought. Except me, the sucker who bought the game twice, but it was worth it. It's a phenomenal game. Uh, so, 
the multiplayer, you know, peak for me was Revelations and three, you know, for the early stages of three. So I, you know, I'm, I know I'm a good player. I know I'm good at it. And against the hardcore of hardcore players, you know, I'm not gonna win every time. I've got a good chance of winning, but you know, I'll lose for sure against the elite of the elite of the elite. I don't know how I'd go against guys like Escalades and Luma. It's a good challenge. I'd like to see one day. Because uh, those are the guys that I watched that got me into it. Because I didn't have Xbox Live at the time when Brotherhood was a thing. So I had to watch them play. That's how I learnt. I just watched them play. And then I finally got Xbox Live when Revelations came out. And I'm like, sweet, finally I get to play. I already know how to play. Because I've watched these guys for the last year do it. There's guys like Squidish, Shemri36, Wingspan TT, Randon Stormwake. Yeah, Escoblades obviously was the first guy I watched. Magnitude X, or also known as Gamers Beverage, yeah, and obviously Luma, and they were the super hardcore players, and it's not like they were all either the best of the best, you know, they weren't the top 10 guys, I think like Rude Onion was like the top 10 back in Revelations Day, she was insanely good, uh, it was ridiculous watching her play, but... I would like to see how it'd go, because I never played them, so I don't know. Who are, the, who are some other people? I played against some of those elite, of elite, you know, top 100 players in the world. Uh, Nick Nitra 7 was one of them. I believe he has a YouTube channel. I played some, back in Revelations, I think I caught him in a couple of games. I think it was like him first by a lot, and then me second by a lot, and then everyone else kind of behind me. Like, I never beat Nick Nitra 7, but I was like the only player that was kind of in it, Whereas everyone else was like really low, low down. I mean, he still beat me by decently, but like, I wasn't close to beating him. But I wasn't, everyone else was embarrassed. I was just kind of like, well, respectable. Respectable for against one of the best players literally in the world. Um, you know, so when I come into playing a multiplayer battle with James, and I knew how much he played, I'd seen him play. You know, it's not like he was terrible. It was just like, I knew, I knew I would win. I, when I was talking shit, like I 100% with confidence, knew exactly what happened in that multiplayer battle. I was actually surprised Brotherhood was so close in the first five minutes. The other two games is exactly how I thought it would go, especially one-on-one, -on -one, because it's not like James can go get points against other players that are busy doing other things. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, I only have to focus on him. I knew for me, I've just got to use the strategies I know. He isn't as into it and doesn't know the strategies per game mode, because I know every game mode back to front. So jumping into it, I knew... Just focusing on him, this is like going to be the easiest walk in the park for me. And it was. That's what it was. I knew that would happen, but everyone's talking shit, right? Everyone's saying, Team Lasers, Team Lasers, Team Lasers. Uh, we've got to see it. So everyone wanted to see it. I'm like, well, okay. Everyone wants to see it. Plus, it's entertaining as fuck. It's hilarious. They're so fun. James and I had such a good time making them, recording them, um, and releasing them to you guys. They're hilarious videos to watch. It doesn't matter who wins or loses. They're just fun videos. But uh, James... Like, I knew, I knew that would be the result, and uh, people wanted to see it, and I was like, well, I know I'd win, so let's do it so I can show everyone, that, as I said at the end of Game 3, that's what happens. That's what happens when you're an average player, who's played once in a while, who played a little bit, who kind of knows about it, comes up and tries to play against me one-on-one. -on -one. That is exactly what had happened. I would romp, I was about to say rape. I would stomp. I would romp you. Um, rape, rape stomp. That's such an aggressive word when you really think about it. A rape stomp. A romp. I would romp you. Uh, and now we've got potential future battles. Now that James is over, James and Team Lasers are now on Team Dynamite. We're buddies again. And uh, future battles will be had. Who will it be? Potentially the Creed, potentially Luma. At the end of the day, I'll battle... I don't care who's next. At the end of the day, I will battle them all. And uh, the goal is for the Tynamite to destroy them all. But as Tyler, I'm in for making great quality multiplayer battle content because they're hilarious. People got a great response. The smart people who knew I was joking. But hopefully everyone gets it now. And can then go forward and enjoy my character knowing that it's a joke. So, a bit of education there for some people. I know people listening, the Team Tynamite is here listening to the Stick of Tynamite podcast, know already the reality of that situation. So, it is what it is. All right. What's next? Let's talk about. I want to do my weekly ramble topic now. Uh. 
I want to talk about community. I want to talk about Kind of Funny, the YouTube channel. I don't know if you, you may, may or may not have heard of them. I want to talk about the controversy and drama that's been going on for the past week with them and Colin Moriarty resigning and everything like that. Uh, there's a lot going on. If you've been following me on Twitter, you might have seen some of the things that I, I've been talking about with it. So I want to talk about that and that'll lead into a bit of a weekly ramble and what I think is the importance of community and how that affects us and our community. So we've got, if you don't know, Kind of Funny and Kind of Funny Games are a company started by Greg Miller, Tim Geddes, Colin Moriarty, uh, Nick Scarpino and Kevin, uh, formerly of IGN. Colin Moriarty was the senior editor of IGN years ago. I think back to me, you know, it was back when IGN was actually half decent and not pure shit like it is now. But they left, started kind of funny. They do podcasts, they do Let's Plays, news, journalism, in video games and movies and entertainment. They're great, funny guys with a great business model, I think. It's inspired me. I love and respect every single member of Kind of Funny, and I want to uh, establish that before I say anything. I respect all of those guys immensely. I will forever be grateful for what they, those guys have done. Seeing, I watched Kind of Funny Live 2 when they put posted on YouTube a couple months ago, and that was from last year, and their live show. Like, I legitimately, and I'm not scared to admit this, I teared up at the end of their Kind of Funny Live too, be- not because I was like, oh my God, this is amazing for them, and it was amazing for them. I teared up because I was so fucking inspired, so inspired. I felt something in my heart going, that is what I want one day to be able to do and to feel that, and I could I could put myself in their position be like, that's what I want. I want to feel what they feel with, you know, you do all that work and you get to do an amazing live performance with all the people that I love what you do. That's, it's incredible stuff. Legitimately teared up because I was so fucking inspired. And yeah, they're inspiring guys. Their business model is uh, a lot uh, of what inspired as well the As Always Entertainment brand and and our business model we're doing through Patreon and doing exclusive content and early access content through Patreon and then being able to link that to my YouTube channel and James' YouTube channel and Kill Connor Club and everything like that. You know, those guys inspired that business model. That's how I came up with it. I saw kind of funny. I'm like, we can do that on a smaller scale. Uh, it's it's an amazing idea. So I recommend anyone go check them out. They're great people. But the great thing about these guys is, you know, the, the main four being Tim, Greg, Colin, and Nick, is when they do these podcasts, the Game Over Greggy show and uh, the Games Cast and everything like that, uh, PS I Love You XOXO, they have these podcasts and shows that are great, hearing them talk about news, games, life, everything, politics. They're diverse personalities with diverse um, ideas and opinions. Greg and Tim are a bit similar. They're different personalities for sure, but they have similar opinions. Nick's a bit uh, of a more macho, outside-the-box um, kind of guy. Uh, a bit not as in-deep with the video game community is like Greg and Tim and Colin are, so he's a bit of an outside perspective, but he's more focused on movies and television and some other entertainment thing. I know he's a fan of guys like Joe Rogan and MMA like I am. And then you got Colin, who's, you know, a bit more of a conservative opinion, libertarian gamer, very smart, very intelligent, political kind of guy. Uh, very inspiring to me, just to hear a refreshing perspective, because whether I agree with someone or not, I love hearing just respectful, uh, intelligent, diverse opinions because it's so good to hear other opinions without getting triggered or upset about it. It's actually good to hear. It's constructive. You learn the other side. You can then use the other side's arguments against your own arguments and see which one actually holds up and maybe you might change your mind about something. But then you use that to debate someone who's smart as well with your old ideas and they say something to you that you hadn't thought about and it makes you flip back and forth and back and forth. But at the end of the day, every time you flip back and forward, it's because you're learning more and more and more. That's why it's so good to hear differing opinions and use them as arguments against people. To hear, do they have a rebuttal? Is there merit to both sides? And that's why I love hearing Colin Moriarty talk because he's a refreshing voice in the video game industry, which is so liberal, so left-wing, so biased to one side, which is the problem. It's not that it's a problem being liberal or left. Um, no, it's not a problem being liberal. The left these days are fucked. They're not even liberal. They're more communist, Marxist, socialist fucks. Um, but the liberals, fine, I'm, I'm a liberal. I consider myself liberal. I have some conservative opinions, but I'm pretty liberal 
in pretty much everything else I think about, um, politically. And I love just hearing someone refreshing in the video game industry like Colin. And he's smart. He's so intelligent. Hear him talk about things. He, he went on the Rubin Report talking about politics, and it was so interesting to hear. Uh, and then he puts out a tweet, right, to the controversy. He puts out a tweet, and uh, he talks about, and this is, uh, I'll, I'll get the tweet up, because I don't want to get it like wrong or anything. Uh, I mean, I'll bring it up on the screen here. Just give me a sec. I'll go find the tweet. So, put, But anyway, he puts up a tweet, which was like a dad joke. It was like, it wasn't even, it's not bad at all. It's actually, I thought it was funny. I thought it was fine. Like, didn't, I didn't really take a blink at it until it went a bit viral, right? And, and I realized that there was controversy. People were getting angry at it. And this huge, that we see these days with the left wing and some liberals, uh, they get fucking triggered. They get upset, they get outraged, and the internet goes fucking ridiculously angry about it, because they're so fucking outraged, oh my god, you can't say that, you can't joke about that, it's, um, it's so ridiculous, it's so embarrassing to see, and it's disgusting to see the outrage culture these days, and, uh, it makes me super pissed off. And to get mad at Colin like they did, and this was last week. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I want to show it. What? Did, where is it, Colin? Okay. I don't, he, I'm, not, I'm sure he hasn't deleted it. Maybe I just missed it. Okay. Um, Colin, where is that? I might have gone past it. Yeah, I might have gone past it. Hang on, I'll, I'll find it. Sorry, guys. Um, but I'll pull it up on the screen when I find it. It was just pretty much, what to say, uh, some peace and quiet hashtag a day without a woman. And it was... On International Women's Day. And it's just like a da stupid dad joke. Like, it's funny because it's just stupid. Something, you know, your dad would say for a laugh. Um, here it is. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up on the screen. Hang on. I'm still figuring out this whole OBS thing out that I'm using the program. Uh, window capture. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I'll pull the, the old tweeters up on the screen. Here it is. And you guys can see a, uh, uh, ah, peace and quiet. Hashtag a day without a woman. <laughs> it's funny. Like it's, it's not sexist. It's not racist. As someone said stupidly, there's articles written about it for outrage culture. Like they weren't writing articles about, uh, real news. They were literally just trying to get people upset and get clicks by saying it's racist. And, uh, it was embarrassing. It was disgusting. As you can see, I liked it. I thought it was fucking funny, but people lost their mind and you'll see replies on it. Uh, what do we have? And this is what Tim Geddes, his co-worker. Uh, These are absolutely not the fans I want, he said when asked about it. Sad, he said that. Uh, now, uh, I've listened to Greg and Tim and Nick address on the Kind of Funny Morning Show what they've said. So, it's not exactly what Tim meant, what it looks like, which I was pissed off about. I replied to it. Um, yeah, here we go. I replied to it. You don't want fans with differing views on humor, disappointed in the lack of loyalty. It makes me sick. And it did. And I was very upset with it. That these guys I like and respect, and I still love and respect Tim and Colin and Greg and Nick and everybody that works at Kind of Funny. But seeing the way... There and you know, Greg came out and made a tweet and said he disagrees with me. Thought his tweet was wrong, and I'm like, "Fuck off, Greg." And he they're arguing that it's about different views. It's not even about different views when you say that. You can't tell someone um, they can't say something. That's what you said. You said you can't say something. It's just a fucking joke for God's sakes. It's it's so ridiculous. It's so stupid that anyone got mad at this 
and I was pretty upset with that. I was just upset seeing this debate and I was like so stupid and pissed off that they got mad at it. And this outrage culture strikes again, this time it kind of funny. A company I love and respect, I look up to him, I'm inspired by, and a guy I love and respect in Colin Moriarty. And then, you know, his girlfriend was next to him and thought the joke was funny. Like, his girlfriend's out there defending him. Um, go through his Twitter. And uh, unfortunately, what made me so, so sad... Uh, Oh, and fun, look at this hilarious his, uh, girlfriend so much for all that peace and quiet <laughs> that's great she's in on it it's this stupid joke get some fucking sense of humor people that got mad at that it's ridiculous um, Glenn Beck got him on his show as well that's great for, for Colin talking about politics and stuff but the problem is and which made me even more upset was this uh, this was on Monday it's with sadness that I announce my resignation from Kinda Funny, effective immediately. <sighs> the outrage culture strikes, causes this, and this is what we get, ladies and gentlemen. Smart people are now out, are now done. See you later. And it's disgusting. You know, someone as smart... Uh, and with such a nice, diverse opinion as Colin, to have him leave a company like that, it's not that he made kind of funny, right? Uh, for some people he did, and some people aren't going to watch. I'm going to struggle to watch now. It's uh, because all of those guys together make kind of funny, right? Because they're all different, with different opinions and views and styles and personalities. And when you take a core differential figure out of that, uh, it's... Uh, it's not good. It's a uh, real. It ruins the dynamic. Things gonna have to change for that company, and it makes me sad. And I'm gonna struggle to watch it. I don't know if I will continue to watch it, but I tell you who I'm gonna continue to watch. That's Mr. Colin Moriarty, because I'm sure he'll get to finally live his other dreams that are outside of video games and video game journalism, inside the world of politics, which he's so well informed on, and interesting on. Well, I don't agree with everything he says, and there's no reason to agree with anything, ev everything anyone says, but. Uh, it, but it's good to hear him out and learn about things and ed be educated about things. So, it's uh, really sad to see. But then I watched Kind of Funny Guys address it. And they talked about it on their morning show on Tuesday or Wednesday. I forget. Maybe it was Monday. Maybe it was Monday, actually. Uh, yeah, it was Monday. Their Monday show this week. Uh, and it was really sad to see, and Greg and Tim addressed it, and their tweets, and, you know, I was a, I was won over by them in terms of, like, um, Collins and are not mad at them, though I don't think he appreciates their lack of loyalty, which, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it was. It was a lack of loyalty, and you can't change that fact. Uh, that's the truth of it. I don't, and I, res and I do respect Greg and Tim a little less because of it, but I don't hate him, I'm not really angry at them as a fan for it but I'm disappointed for sure um and it's a bit sad that I did it this way but I I get that they were moving all in different directions and there's more than just those tweets that Colin left Colin had been thinking about leaving for a lot of reasons for a lot of things for a while and it just happened probably at an accelerated level because of this public um sp um argument that didn't need to be what it was and was blown so out of proportion it was ridiculous and it's just, it's really sad to see. I'm really, you know, it made me really upset and seeing these guys on their morning show crying uh, because they feel like in some ways they're, you know, losing one of their friends, even though they are all friends. And Colin was even there and he's going to be on, do a podcast with them this week or next week. Talking about it, I'm definitely going to be listening to that because I'm sure they'll be talking about the tweet and debating it. It'll be interesting to see how they argue with it. But I, it was, um, at the end of the day, It was a lack of loyalty on a, at some level because you don't have to agree. I'm not saying Greg and Tim should have agreed with Colin. If they didn't like the tweet, they don't like the tweet, that's fine. But to when you have these this outrage culture and these leftist, socialist, communist controlling fucks saying, getting triggered by every little thing, that's, you're sexist. I'm offended. Well, I, it's so fucking ridiculous and stupid. 
and uh, you can joke about anything as long as it's clever, and that was fucking hilarious. Just because it was so stupid, it's just a dad joke. It's not. It's not even that smart, and it's ironic because he's such a loud dude in some ways. Like especially with those guys, he worked with a bunch of loud guys. Um, it's ironic because he's such an intelligent such a well-spoken person to do just a simple dad joke is a bit like, oh, so ironic, Colin. Um, and it was funny on International Women's Day. Like, it wasn't mean-spirited, but the responses he got were mean-spirited. From both sides, of course. People getting angry about both sides, insulting each other, name-calling. It was just sad to see that kind of split. Because you only react like that, react with intelligence and arguing that there's no reason to be upset about a joke. and and But to be outraged and to be... M- um, this mob mentality that gets fueled by these fucks, these left wing fucks that have a voice out there that fuel the fire and get angry at this, and then everyone else gets angry at this. People write articles saying he's racist joke, sexist joke, lying, lying about the tweets, and then putting it in articles. People don't even read the article. They don't even read the tweet. They just see that, and they just that's all. They they see the title of the article. And they get angry about it. And they tweet at Colin and they get upset. And then to have his friends agree with the mob and say, yeah, we believe it was wrong. These aren't the fans we want. And sure, it may not have been what they meant. They may not have said it right. But fuck, you shouldn't have put it on Twitter like that. Fucking hell. Because that just fueled the fire um, more to towards your supposed good friend. You know, I wouldn't... I, disgusting and and it's, it's disgusting it's a lack of loyalty james and i disagree on shit all the time all the time and we argue but it's fun it doesn't make us not friends we've never had an argument that's made us any less friends it probably only makes us closer you know maybe five minutes and we'll be upset with each other and then we'll cool off but no, nothing really that bad at all but that goes with any of my friends but i'm just talking about james in terms of you'll see this on a podcast as a like a publicly you know, you're not going to see in my private life, but you all know what it's like. Sometimes you argue with your good friends and we can disagree, but you would never, and even the drama that's happened with our community, with James and stuff like that, or Twitter and tweets and things he says, there's definitely tweets I don't agree with, but never when there's some outrage, which he has had to deal with at times, when the outrage culture comes, when people get upset, never have I ever not stood by him and publicly said, I support him 100%. Have I said I disagree with the tweets he said? Yeah, definitely. But I've told him that directly um, before I say anything publicly. And even when I say publicly, I said the same thing. If James goes down, I go down with him. You know, I'm, I would, I'll back James up forever. Because that's loyalty is the single most important thing to me. I tweeted this out when this little shit was going on with Colin and kind of funny. Because it was disgusting, and it made me sick, and I was really upset with how everything went down, you know? That's not how things should go down. But, it is what it is, I guess. Colin's left kind of funny, and I look forward to seeing what he does next, because he's an interesting guy, and you guys should pay attention to him. I learned something. Uh, If you're interested in that sort of talking points and debates and and politics and things like that, it's interesting. It's good to know about. But that leads me into community because now kind of funny are dealing with a split community. And their whole year this year is about community. But that then makes me think about our community and the importance of it. And, you know, there'll be times probably where we'll be split on things. There's times where we have already been split on things. But the important thing about community is uh, sticking together, looking after each other, caring about each other. We don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to like everything about each other. But to respect each other and be there for each other when it matters most is important. And to also... Not take things too personally and too seriously. We're only human here, yeah? We can argue things might happen, but there's no reason to get so upset about it and get so mad at each other for things, you know? It is what it is. It is what it is. And with our community, I just 
want to say how much I appreciate you guys. Uh, because without you guys, seriously, you guys keep me fucking getting up in the morning. Every single morning. To have people that, you know, I dreamed of doing this. Having a channel where people would listen to me. The guys I used to watch, you know, they weren't big channels. Just like, I'm not a big channel. But I'm on their level of these guys I looked up to now. The guys I'm like, oh man, if I had a channel their size, that's like the goal. I don't need it to be huge, just like that big. And I have that. Once I hit 10,000, it was literally the end goal. I was like, I literally achieved everything I ever dreamed of doing. I never dreamed of making a career out of YouTube. I never dreamed of having a million subscriber channel or anything. I was just like, if I can have a cool, respectable channel with like 10,000 people, I've made it. I've made it as far as I ever dreamed of making it. And I literally thought it was only a dream. I'm going to try. I gave it my best shot. And I dreamed that maybe it could happen. And it's, you know, we're so close. It's going to happen this year for sure. Unless I die before then. That's just you know, a bit unfortunate. But... You know, we're on the way to 10,000 this year. No doubt. No doubt in my mind. So, to be here right now uh, is, I, God, I owe you guys so much. Keep me fucking waking up in the morning every single day knowing I got a place I can be me. Me completely. Uh, be creative. Uh, and be who I am, and show myself, and people uh, love and support, and and watch me and hate me, but it's all cool with me, you know. And uh, everyone's so, you know, good and nice, uh, even though we do disagree on things, you know. To build this that I've done with, uh, you know, James and Ethan and George and Nick and everybody and all the friends I've met, it's an absolute fucking dream. So. I, you know, I just want to thank you guys uh, for, for b being there and being a part of this thing where we're just some, one big family. And uh, people have said, you know, refer to us as the Assassin's Creed community, which we're not. I don't think of us as the Assassin's Creed community. There is an Assassin's Creed community. Then there's our community, which I, in part is a segment of the Assassin's Creed community. But we don't just talk about Assassin's Creed. We're not friends just because of Assassin's Creed. We don't just talk about about Assassin's Creed. You know, as we might be called hashtag the Four Pillars community. I don't know if that's a thing, but you know, where that's the community. I mean, the community where we're just friends and we have similar interest in Assassin's Creed or Kingdom Hearts or Horizons Zero Dawn or video games, podcasts, personalities. You know, we get along and it's awesome. It's freaking amazing so thank you to you guys for just always being there and just being a part of it it, it really means everything to me truly Whew. I almost got a bit emotional there I had to kind of stop myself from that it's been an emotional week all right, that's my weekly ramble part. Let's move on. What's next? What are we doing? Uh, I saw a movie yesterday. I've, I have so many movies out, and I don't get a chance to go to the movies as much as I'd like. But I saw a movie yesterday. You might have heard of it. It's called Logan. Uh, the final Wolverine X-Men movie of this generation, of this era, for the last, what, 17 years? When did the first X-Men movie come out? 2000, 2001, I believe, uh, came out, 2000, wow, 17 years ago, and you know, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, has been in, seven, what was he in? X-Men, X-Men 2, obviously, X-Men 3, The Last Stand, X-Men Origins Wolverine, X-Men The Wolverine, obviously he was in X-Men Days of Future Past, and Logan, I don't think he was in Apocalypse, I haven't seen Apocalypse, and I don't think he was in X-Men First Class, I don't remember X-Men First Class that much, but he's in at least seven, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing the fact that he was in Apocalypse or First Class, but... At least out of the nine, he's in seven. You know, 17 years he's been doing it. He's been around. He's fucking been around. 
And by far, out of all of them that I've seen, the only one I think I haven't seen is Apocalypse. But by far, the best one's Logan. By far, the best one's Logan. It was truly incredible. And I thank Deadpool for making R-rated superhero movies a thing. Because that movie had to be you know, R-rated to be able to pull it off, to be able to do it. And to be able to uh, exist, they had to be able to do the R rating and really go all in with it, you know? So, thank you to Deadpool for making R rated a thing so that they could make a movie like Logan. Which I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's uh, definitely got my recommendation worth a watch and it was um really emotion it was really dark action-packed really emotional like i teared up a few times i must admit throughout the whole thing it's really good hit, hit you right in the feels on a lot of different levels all the way through the movie i feel so, well worth a watch. I really like how it's paced, to be honest. When when you have a movie like that, that is so dark and so uh, gruesome, you've got to pace it right. And you've got to pace it with, to me, you've got to give me breaks in movies, especially when it's like two, it's like two and a half hours long. So, when you've got a movie like that, you've got to be able to pace it well. You've got to be able to uh, give me some moments and times to rest and recover before you go to the next big action scene, you go to the next big uh, section of it. Like, for example, you have, what's it called? Uh, well, you have like these dark scenes, right? So, you have either an action scene or you have a scene that's really dark, really emotionally draining. And when you're drained like that, when you're really into a movie like that, you need breaks. You need sections of the movie where things slow down. You get a bit of breathing time. It's not full full balls to the walls going at that stage. That's what you need. And that movie did it really well, I thought. It had times where I got my breath back. I was like, okay. And then on to the next thing. Uh, and it was tense the whole way through, because obviously it's the last, you know, Wolverine movie, the last X-Men movie with Hugh Jackman. So it's tense for a lot of reasons because of that. It's a superhero movie where you're like, you don't know whether your superhero is going to live or die and when it's going to happen in the movie. You know what I mean? If it does. You just don't know. And going into that movie, I'm sitting there thinking, will or won't, will he or won't he die? Like, it's not like a James Bond movie where you're like, you know James Bond's going to live. You know nothing bad's going to happen to him. You're like, I don't know. It could happen, but maybe they won't do it. Maybe they'll do it this way. So it was tense the whole way through because you just don't know until the, until you're the end of what how, how it goes. Uh, it was really well paced, well done, needed to, to do something that dark. It had to be equally as gruesome, which the R rating gave it, which was really interesting to see. The acting, Hugh Jackman's oh, fucking amazing as, uh, as Wolverine, obviously. The little girl who played the little mutant girl, she was outstanding. Re- it's really hard to find good kid actors. She's not the, like, the best one I've ever seen, but she's really good. Did what she had to do. Really liked her. Obviously, I thought the whole cast was great. Some of the villains were interesting. They weren't so fleshed out, but like not bad whatsoever. I, I hated them enough. As I needed to. And. I don't think it was too long. It was maybe. Nah. It was. It could have been shorter. But it it was fine. It was really really good. F- fantastic. Fantastic movie. So highly recommend that. If anyone hasn't seen it. I haven't really been watching many new movies lately. I've been, actually that, that reminds me. Supposed to be keeping a list, so I'll, I'll show you at the end of the year. I'm keeping a list of every new movie I've seen, not new movie, every movie I've never seen before that I'm watching in 2017. I'm adding it to a list and rating it out of 10. So it's, it's like a notes list on my phone movies I've watched in 2017. Then I'm keeping a list. Uh, I better write in. Because I've watched a few and I haven't written them down on that. On the notes. What I wrote Logan out of 10? 
I'd give it a nice 8 out of 10. It's fantastic. Well worth a watch. Well worth a watch. A solid 8 out of 10. A strong 8. Um, so that's a great rating for me. An 8 to me is just a fucking awesome movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. A 9 to 9.5, that movie's like, God, I... Explode my mind. And I've only seen... Oh, no, that's not true. I reckon I've seen... I've seen one out of all the movies because most of these movies I've seen aren't like new movies; they're all like old movies that I haven't seen before. I'll give you a rundown so far, an up an update. So the first movie I saw this year on January first was Assassin's Creed, which I gave a two out of ten. Fucking abysmal movie. The second movie that I hadn't seen before that I watched this year was Room, which so far is the best movie I've seen this year. Uh, I gave it a nine point five out of ten. One of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. It stuck with me for weeks. For weeks, I still think about it. It's a uh, the movie's absolutely phenomenal. The acting, the story, it's just, he it just get, he just got me, you know, it just hit, hit, hit me right, right where it hurts. So Zodiac, which was actually in my film theory class today, and we were watching some clips from this movie. It's really well done with its, um, expressionist style, because we're do- watching some old German expressionist films from the 30s, um, which was, was some good ones, but one we just watched called M which is a really good movie about a child serial killer. And uh, there's some really great scenes there, if you haven't seen that movie, with, like, a kangaroo court and the Germans, like, cat, like, these, like, vigilante justice stuff. It's just, it's a really good movie. I think it was made in 1931. Uh, It came out in Germany. It's all in German, obviously, so it's, if you don't like watching, reading subtitles, maybe it's not for you, but I thought it was fantastic. Um, But, Zodiac takes some stuff from that German ex- German expressionist movement, uh, but it's re- that's a really good film. I gave that an eight out of ten. Fantastic movie, absolutely loved it. Silence of the Lambs, really good. Like I'm trying to catch up on old classics I've never seen before. Is my goal here? So yeah, Silence of the Lambs. I gave an eight point five out of ten. That's fantastic with Jodie Foster, obviously, and um, oh, fuck, I can't believe I forget. I'm gonna have to Google this because it's this gonna kill me. Um, the guy who plays Silence of the Lambs. The guy who plays um Hannibal Lecter. The guy who plays Hannibal Lecter, um, Anthony Hopkins. Oh wow, that's one of the best uh, villains I've ever seen in a movie. Uh. One of the best roles and and someone playing a role I've ever seen is f- absolutely fantastic by Anthony Hopkins, and it was scary shit. Such a crazy. He's like he's like if you don't know what Silence of the Lambs about, I'll give you a rundown. So, um, so Jodie Foster is like an investigator, a detective, but she's in still in school, like in like detective school, I guess. I don't know what the fuck to call it. And her, she's top of her class, and her teacher asks us just to go see Hannibal Lecter. And talk to him through like a glass wall because he's in like an insane asylum. He was a serial killer that used to eat his victims, and they build a relationship, not like a sexual relationship, but like a relationship, an interest in each other through talking to each other. And Hannibal Lecter's a super smart guy, but he's so fucking weird the way he talks and stuff. And because they're trying to hunt down Buffalo Bill, this other serial killer is like a copycat killer. So she uses Hannibal to find him, but then it, it's phenomenal. It's a fantastic movie. Uh, the Lincoln Lawyer with um, Matthew McConaughey. I gave that an 8.5 out of 10. That was also a fantastic movie. Really, really good. Uh, I just love, I love me some Matthew McConaughey. And I just love some, I love crime movies. Uh, Shutter Island, I gave that an 8 out of 10. Uh, ca- catching up on some... Beautiful Martin Scorsese films. Uh, that's starring, obviously, Leonardo DiCaprio. Not exactly what I thought it would be. A bit arty, but I liked it. liked it a lot. Uh, the second best film I think I've seen this year was Good Will Hunting with Robin Williams, Matt, Matt Damon, and Ben Affleck. Ooh, that's a really, you know, some guys growing up in Boston... I don't know what that was. I was trying to do a Boston accent. That wasn't even, like, in the realm of a Boston accent. I apologize. I can't do one, so I'm not going to try. Um, but Good Will Hunting. Phenomenal movie. If you like Robin Williams, Matt Damon, it's just, whoo. Whoo. 
that'll hit you. Taxi Driver, another Scorsese film with uh, Robert De Niro. 7.5 out of 10. That was a solid movie. Really good. Early days of Scorsese and De Niro. So it wasn't big budget. Again, wasn't really what I expected from it either. It took me a little while to get into it, but uh, I definitely got into it. That was, a, that was a really, really good movie as well. And then I've just seen quite a few through my film theory classes this year. We watched a few, been watching silent movies, but that M, that German expressionist film, was during the time where they just started getting sound. So this dialogue in it, where we were watching uh, Battleship Potemkin last week, which was, is a uh, Soviet film from, I believe, 1925, which was interesting. Bit of pro- communist propaganda, but solid movie as well. So that's what I'm doing. I'll keep a list going this year with other new movies I've seen. I don't think I've seen any other brand new movies I've never seen before. I haven't really gone to the cinemas at all this year. I think the only time was Assassin's Creed and now Logan. But go see Logan. Go do it. It's great. Ooh, running out of time. Let's move on. The only other thing I want to talk about, I'm, before I go to my breakdown, some UFC stuff. What else is going on? <laughs> This is fun. I like doing this. I've been talking for, you know, almost an hour. Just me talking. No edits. Just rambling. I love it. This is what I wa- why I want to do this podcast again. With just me talking. You guys know everything that's going on. Keeping up. What else have I been... I finished... I finished Horizon Zero Dawn this week. I'll talk about that more in Kill Connor Club, but that was... Whew. James and I think are doing a spoiler cast for it at some point. That'll be whoo, lit, fam, vintage, sweet lads. I shouldn't say that. That's so weird. But yeah, that was that game is uh, one of the best games I've played uh, in a long time. That and Uncharted Four are the two best games I think I've played in the last six years, five six years. Both PlayStation 4 exclusives. Interesting. Glad I got a PS4 last year. Jesus Christ. Good to catch up on those exclusives. Um, So that was great. Long game. Probably took me 35 hours to complete. Plus I was doing lots of side content on the way. So it's probably like, story-wise, at least 20, 25 hours. Like, solidly. Because you have to do side activity. Because you have to level up. I don't feel like you could finish the game without being a decently high level. And, like, I comfortably, like, the last end part was, all, you know, kind of almost challenging. Like, it was, everything was first attempt because it was such a high level. But, like, man, if I was a low level, I couldn't imagine being able to, you know, beat it, to be honest. But, yeah, got that done. That was fun. Uh, to end, I would like to go to some... I would like to go to some UFC talk. Let's for, So for those of you who aren't interested in UFC, maybe listen in. You might become a fan. If you don't, I guess you can click off because you've listened to everything you want to listen to. But we're going to talk UFC. We've got UFC London this weekend, this Saturday. Uh, 8 a.m. it starts. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Because it's in live in London. So it's like early afternoon for like the US and night time for the UK. So we've got, I'm just going to go through the fights I care about. I'm going to pull this up on the screen here. Sorry, guys. I'll be one sec. So you guys can see. I've got the fight card up. Uh, Yep. Let's do this. Almost up. Give me a sec. Here we go. Okay, here we go, got that up, okay, let's talk, what have we got, oh, fuck, the main card doesn't start, the main card starts at like 8am, I probably could watch it then live, because I'm working on Sunday, but not till the afternoon, so I'm going to watch this, I'll be able to get up and watch this card, awesome, there's some good fights on here, what have we got, so obviously the main event, Jimmy Manoa and Corey Anderson, light heavyweight fight. 
Um, I mean, this is a good fucking fight. Manor was just coming off a knockout of OSP up in St. Prue. I think that was October, November. That was a really good fight. Um, he fucking slept OSP um, with a left hand, I believe. Came over the top with a right, wobbled him hard, and then just like nudged him with a little left. And OSP like fucking like died. Fucking died right there. Not really. He didn't actually die, people. But, you know, he went out. He went out. Um, both guys have been looking really good lately. But if I have to go with one, I don't remember. What was Corey Anderson? What was your last fight, man? I don't remember. Let's have a look. Let's go to your stats. Let's take a peek into the stats. Corey Anderson. Who was your last fight, bro? Uh, you beat December 9th. Was that Sean O'Connell? Was that... Oh, okay. That was the... Buffalo card, the New York card, maybe it was a different, it was in New York, it was in New York somewhere, the state of New York. Oh yeah, of course, he lost to Shogun at 198, I remember that. But that was by decision, it was a split decision I believe, I think it was, or but it was, you know, a close fight, and then won in December, so he's doing alright, and Manawa got slept himself by Anthony Johnson like a year and a half ago, that was I think his last loss, and then he's won the last two, or three, but he just beat OSP, that's a good fight, I mean, I think Manawa's got a lot more technical skill, he's faster than Anderson, I think he'll probably, if I, yeah, I feel like, yeah, I mean, Corey's a bit of a big guy, but they got the same reach, but Corey's just a bit taller. I mean, I just think Manuel's faster and more technical. Uh, Corey's a great fighter, and he's getting better and better, but I think just he's not as experienced as Manoa. If I had to pick, I'm going to go with uh, Jimmy Manoa winning that by, I'm going to say, I mean, it's a five-round fight, right? Third, fourth round, TKO. I feel like it's going to be in the middle of the fight. Like, the first two rounds will be quite interesting. I don't feel like it's going to be in the first round. I don't think it's going to go to decision. I think in the middle there. Somewhere in the third round. Jimmy Manuel's TKO's in. My favorite fight of that night is going to be this, though. It's going to be Gunnar Nelson versus Alan Joban. That is a motherfucker of a fight. I'm a big fan of Gunnar Nelson, training partner of Conor McGregor. Uh, he's taken some time. He hasn't fought in a little while. Maybe almost like nine months. He lost to Damian Meyer back in December of 2015, and then he won, had fought once in 2016, which, which he won again. But, I mean, Damian, losing to Damian Meyer is nothing wrong with that. Like, Damian Meyer is the next person to get a title shot in that division. He's, and probably will beat Tyron Woodley, if you ask me. He's the next, Damian Meyer is the uncrowned, to some, UFC welterweight champion. So not, not a sad thing to lose to Damian Meyer, but Gunnar Nelson's a beast, man, on the ground. I think, um... I think if this goes to the grand, it's over for Alan. But Alan just came off a big win in December in Sacramento off uh, partner Mike Perry, who was undefeated until he just lost to Alan, um, which was a mostly a standing contest. And Alan just outclassed him. He's so skilled on the feet. And um, plus, look at that guy. That's a handsome motherfucker there. He's a model, obviously. Look at him. Ridiculous. That jawline. Oh, get out of here. But you're coming up against a guy straight out of fucking Iceland. An absolute fucking Viking of a man. I think, uh, if you really want to ask me what's going on, I think, I mean, Alan, I don't really see Alan as a guy that's going to knock people, come out swinging knock people out. He's going to technically beat the fuck out of you and finish you. But I don't think he's going to do that to Gunnar Nelson. I think Gunnar Nelson's going to take some of his punches, give a few of them back, but Alan will probably have th have uh, the upper hand on the feet. But Gunnar's going to take him the fuck down. He's going to wear him out somewhere in the second round. I think early in the third round, He's going to put him on his ass, and he's going to submit him. I truly believe that. What other fights do we have? Oh, yes. We have Brad, one punch picket. Not that he's one punch in anyone these days, but it's MMA. You can't speak too soon. He, the old Englishman himself fighting in London. His last fight of his career. He's an old dog. Old Brad Pickett. And uh, he just fought Uri Faber in Sacramento as well in December. Lost that fight by decision. But that was Uri Faber, one of the greatest of all time, one of the legends of the sport. 
Um, that was Uriah Faber's last fight of his career. Now he's retired. And Brad Pickett, I know, said he took inspiration from that and said he wants to do his final fight in his hometown as uh, Uriah did in Sacramento, which is his hometown where he has uh, the Team Alpha Male uh, Ultimate Fitness Gym he owns. And so that's much respect to Brad Pickett. I know his opponent fell out. I forget who it was, but he's got uh, Marlon Vera, who I don't know who he is, replacing him. Uh, 63% of his wins by submission. So that's five of his eight wins by submission. Two decisions, one KO. So obviously not bad on the ground, but I mean, look at Brad Pickett is fucking diverse everywhere. 31% his wins by KO, 38 submission, 31 decision. He's a diverse guy. Brad is an all-rounder, and this Marlon is a, just a young up-and-comer. Lots of inexperience in comparison. He's baby compared to Brad. I mean, I see. I just see Brad taking this. This is his last fight. He's going to come out fucking hard as fuck. He's going to be inspired from that loss to Uriah Faber and see how Uriah came out knowing it was his last fight. So, I hope to see Brad do the same. Maybe even finish Marlon here. There's a good chance of it. He's so much more experienced. Whether he hits him, take, knocks him down. I think um, I think Brad uh, drops, drops Marlon in the first, end of the first round, or early in the second. Uh, I don't think Marlon's got a young chin on him. I don't think he's going to get completely knocked out. I don't know if Brad has the power to do that either. Um, but he'll knock him down, and he'll. Uh, I think he's going to s- then uh, grapple with him and submit him on the ground. But I'm, I'm interested to see. Clearly Marlon's not bad on the ground, but who is he for? That's the question. His ground game, how good is it? Really, against elite fighters like Brad Pickett? We'll see. I'm picking Brad, though. I'm picking Brad for sure. I'm going to say by submission, second round. Knocks him down. Uh, doesn't finish him with punches, but he, um, you know, gets him in a guillotine or a rear naked or something like that. This is a fight I care about. This is the uh, pretty much the only other fight on the card I see that I care about. I don't think there's any others. I'm interested to see uh, this girl, Lena Landsberg. She just fought Cyborg. Got the fuck beaten out of her, but she's cute. Uh, we've got Joe Duffy, Irish Joe Duffy, versus Reza Matadi, the main event, the fight pass prelims. Uh, Joe Duffy, uh, that is, uh, he is one bad motherfucker. One of only three guys to ever defeat the notorious Conor McGregor, the UFC lightweight champion, former featherweight champion of the world. Uh, Con- uh, Conor, Joe I mean, he's a beast. He, who, who's his losses to? He's only lost in the UFC to Dustin Poirier, who's a monster. Then again, Conor McGregor's knocked Dustin the fuck out in the first round. I mean, these days, I don't see Joe Duffy ever beating Conor McGregor today, but he beat Conor, like, in Ireland back when they were, like, on the independent circuit. Like, I think it was Conor's, like, fifth fight of his career or sixth fight of his career. And then after he lost to Joe, he went on, like, a 16-fight win streak, you know, won two world titles, you know, the, the usual. Um... But yeah, Joe, I really love Joe Duffy. Nice dude, really talented fighter. I think he beats the fuck out of Reza. Like, I don't think it's even close. I think he beats the living shit out of him. I think Joe, I don't know, understand how Joe Duffy's not ranked. That's beyond me. I think he's, I don't know if he's top 10, but he's for sure top 15. And fighting another unranked guy, Joe will kill him. Joe is going to kill him. So, that's what I think is going to happen. I think he's going to finish him very in the first round. I, um, he'll either knock him out, or he'll, uh, he's really good with transitioning from striking to grappling. It's similar to a Tony Ferguson in that sense of like he can wobble you with punches and all of a sudden next thing you know you're on the ground being choked out. Um, I think Joe can do that really well. He's su- got such strong jiu-jitsu. So I think Joe will do what he's done before. He's going to wobble you and he's going to transition so nice to uh, like either a uh, guillotine or something along those lines. Uh, so that's my prediction. Joe Duffy. I think and I'm picking some missions today. Not the most common of finishes that you see. But I really do think that's what Joe's going to do this kid. Unless he just really cleans his clock. A bit of an older guy. Maybe he cleans his clock and knocks him out. This Iranian dude. Maybe he's not old. Maybe he's just Iranian. Oh, is that racist? No, it's just a fucking joke. Jokes still offend people. Well, be offended, you fucks. I got the multiplayer battle up. You don't need to see that. Why are we on there? 
I don't know why I change things. Why do I do that? Um, I forget I'm recording. I'm just like, oh, I'll just go on my Google. But those are the fights I care about for London. How are those fights last weekend, though? They were pretty fucking good. Really good. In Brazil. Viva. Brasilia. That's Spanish. That's not Portuguese. They speak Portuguese in Brazil. You fuck, Tyler. Shut up, Tyler. But those are the fights I care about in London. And my predictions. But from last week in Brazil, Kelvin Gastelum fucked Vitor Belfort's life up. Pretty much exactly how everyone expected. Kelvin looking great at middleweight. Already booked to fight Anderson Silver UFC 212 in June in Rio de Janeiro. Brazil as well. The Mexicans heading back to Brazil again to slay another Brazilian legend. Probably will happen too. Probably will happen too. All right, what else do we have? I don't know if there's much else to go through. We've been going for over an hour now. It's go it's been going good. I'm really happy with um with how this has gone. This is what I wanted to do. This is I wanted to uh talk to you guys, ramble on, do this podcast, stick a ton of his back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget there's timestamps. Doesn't matter now you're the end. So it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this stick of time of my podcast. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Give me some ideas and how you want me to structure it. Did you like the structure today where I just go from topic to topic to topic? Ramble, 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 and end with some UFC. Let me know. I want to hear your thoughts. So Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Like the podcast. Subscribe to my channel. Give me some feedback on the podcast structure, what I can do, what I can add, all that sort of stuff. And again, thank you for watching. And if you want more extra content, of course, subscribe and go to patreon.com slash as always. And for $1, you can get amazing extra bonus exclusive content. So do it. I dare you. Anyway, guys, thank you again for watching. And I will see you later.